verses that are found in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 and verse 15. And so the anger of the Lord fell again upon the nation of Israel. So he set a plague upon them that lasted for three days. Just as in the days of David, when in the midst of judgment for their sins, a plague killed thousands and threatened the lives of many more, so a moral plague is spreading rapidly through the youth of our nation, threatening the eternal destiny of an entire generation. The evidence is all around us. Consider the following statistics facing our youth today. 30.3% of our nation's youth will use illegal drugs by 8th grade. On average, teenagers will begin drinking alcohol by age 12, and 2,800 teenage girls will become pregnant each day. In a time when the judgment and wrath of the Lord was crushing down upon the nation of Israel for their sins, King David was willing to make a sacrifice. In verse 17, he cries out to God, Lord, I am the one who has sinned. These people are innocent. Let your anger fall upon me and my family. In this portion of scripture, it may seem that it was for David's sins and the judgment was falling, but it's made very clear for us in verse 1 that the anger of the Lord was upon Israel, not David. We see here in the heart of David that he had such an undying love for the nation that he was willing to absorb their punishment so that they would not have to suffer. If we as young leaders are going to put an end to the surge of moral corruption that is upon our land, then we cannot stand in judgment of our nation, but rather realize this wave will allow our watch. Before Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall surrounding the city, he inquired of a visitor how it was going. He was very hurt to find that the people there were in great distress because the walls were broken down and the gates were burned with fire. Upon hearing this, he went into many days of mourning, weeping, and fasting as he carried the burden of the Lord. He confessed that we have sinned and that we need to take responsibility. In 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, God said, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. The turning point in this generation must begin with righteousness, and the turn to righteousness must begin now. Now we also see here in the life of David that in a great time of trial in his life, he knew what he had to do. When everything around him was crashing down, he knew he had to offer up a sacrifice. So in verse number 19, he went to the home of Avana to use his threshing floor to offer up a sacrifice that the Lord would lift the curse. In verse number 22, Avana says to David about the threshing floor. Take it, my Lord, and use it as you wish. I will give it all to you, and may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. But David replied, I cannot present burnt offerings to my Lord, that which cost me nothing. A writer represents a generation that is trying to find the easy way to reverse the curse. A generation who is looking for the easy way out, instead of making the necessary sacrifice that God demands of each and every one of our lives. We have become a church that is trying to save people through lights, drama, music, and glamour, which may all have their place, but nothing will ever take the place of prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the preaching of the unchanging Word of God. I believe that in this critical moment in United States history, God is looking for young people who will rise up, be different, be set apart, and make an impact for the kingdom of our God. In Ezekiel 22, verse 30, God said, And I sought for a man among them who should make up a hedge and stand in the gap for me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The days we are living are perilous. You can turn on the news or pick up a magazine on any given day and hear another murder or another state that wants to legalize gay marriages. Now more than ever, we need a generation of God-fearing young people who will stand firm and live lives that honor and serve the Lord. May it not be said of our generation that he found none, but that he found us faithful. <laughs> October 2nd, 2006 will live on in each one of our lives as one of the most traumatic days in our country's history. On this day, Charles Carl Roberts raided an Amish schoolhouse, killing four young girls and scarring the lives of many more. Four days later, the funeral for the gunman was held, and dozens of family members and friends of the victims arrived to comfort the family and show their forgiveness toward this man. Six months later to the day, the families of the victims opened a brand new school that now stands as a testimony that where there was once death, there is now life. Where there was once tragedy, there is now triumph all because of the sacrifices they were willing to make. And I too believe that if we as young people will make the decision now to live lives of sacrifice and not selfishness and turn our hearts back to the ways of God, we can turn this broken nation back to Jesus Christ. We can turn this nation around just as Israel was back in the days of David. God has called each and every one of us to do a mighty and marvelous work for him. Will you answer the call? Thank you. Mm -hmm.